News time on KCIM. Let's get your first look at news with Nathan Combs. Thank you very much, John, and good morning, everyone. The Carroll City Council sparred over several aspects of the fiscal year 2025 preliminary budget prior to its initial approval at their meeting Monday night. The nearly 300-page budget includes department proposals, individual fund reviews, tax levy calculations, and much, much more. City leaders found most of the preliminary budget satisfactory, but there were a few sticking points for council members, beginning with the $102,000 ask from the Carroll County Growth Partnership. Several council members wanted to reduce the amount to $82,000 following the end of the retail coach contract, which the City of Carroll helped fund. City Manager Aaron Koiker has discussed the council's concerns with CCGP staff. Talking with Kimberly at CCGP, she is comfortable with going back to the 82,000, which matches what the county is supporting. And I would recommend that the council make that motion to put the CCGP's funding at the $82,000 and change. A motion from Ward 1 Councilman Tom Bordnero to adjust CCGP's funding from the city to $82,400 was approved unanimously. Quaker notes the Economic Development Organization is planning to add a new position to their staff, and the council will likely be asked to consider a budget amendment once the details of that posting's needs are determined. Another point of contention is a city-funded courtesy vehicle at the Arthur Inn New Airport. Currently, the city leases a car for $6,600 per year from Wittrox to be used by airport customers, and the city also pays for the insurance premiums. The council had previously suggested the airport use a local cab company, rideshare apps, or accept a donation from the city of a former Carroll Police Department patrol vehicle to provide transportation, but those ideas were rejected. Ward 2 Councilman Jason Atherton moved to remove the vehicle funding from the FY25 budget, but the motion died due to a lack of a second. Ward 3 Councilman Kyle Bauer says the issue deserves further discussion for future budget years. I think it makes sense for us to look at purchasing something. If we look at a $30,000 vehicle, there's going to be some government price concessions on, say, a van. You have that paid for in four and a half years. And you're going to probably run that thing for 10 years or so, and you still have something in the end. Right now, we're just throwing money out the window, and we're still paying for insurance. Greg Seaman, a Carroll Airport Commission member, says they need a courtesy vehicle at the airport because cab availability does not always meet customers' needs, and the community does not have a rental car company nearby. According to Seaman, the commission is tasked with running the airport, and they have the final say in its operation. I remind everybody that the airport commission operates the airport. Now, everybody can talk about you should do this or you should do that or you should do something else, but that decision is our decision according to the Iowa Code, and we will continue to operate that airport the way we see fit. And we believe that the present arrangement with Whitrox, and that was the low bid, the only okay. bid we had, works. It would also work to follow Laverne Dirks' suggestion that we look into the procurement of a car for the airport's use. That would also work. And we're happy to discuss those things, but we run the airport. The council did not vote to cut the vehicle funding from the airport budget. The final issue was the proposed rehabilitation of the Grand Park Bandshell. The early estimates for that construction work are around $150,000, but it is not included in the FY25 budget. Representatives from the Carroll Historic Preservation Commission have committed to raising $75,000 for that project. They are requesting the city provide the remaining $75,000. The council declined to include that funding until a more solid cost estimate is available, and the council voted 5-1, to one, Atherton being the sole nay vote to approve the preliminary budget. The timeline for final approval includes setting a public hearing on the proposed property tax levy, and that'll be on the March 25th meeting, and then a hearing on the entire FY25 budget on April 8th, with a deadline to file with the county and state by April 30th. Video from that budget debate is included with this story on our website. And Dare Police Chief and BW Outfitters owner Brad Wint of Denison was found guilty in federal court Wednesday for fraudulently obtaining National Firearms Act regulated machine guns. Wint was found guilty of 11 of the 15 charges that had been levied against him for abusing his status as a police chief to acquire nearly 100 machine guns for himself, his store locations in Denison and Anita, as well as Williams Contracting, a business owned by his friend Robert Williams. The charges stem from a lengthy investigation by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Federal Bureau of Investigation that culminated with a joint raid on August 31st of 2022 at Wentz store locations, Wentz home, the Air Police Department, and Williams' home. Wentz faces significant prison time and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. A sentencing hearing is scheduled for June 14th. 
that is going to be wrapping up your KCIM 6 o'clock news. I'm Nathan Cohen's reporting. All right. Thanks, Nathan, for that news update. Once again, we've got all that available on the website and the mobile app. Plus, Boys State Wrestling, you want any of the results from yesterday, interviews with the athletes, you can log on to our sports website. Get in-depth with all of that coverage yesterday that Jeff, Jeff, and Bill Kane all brought to us. Again, go to sports.1380kcim.com or Download the mobile app and have it on your phone. Search CB Sports Network in your app store today. It's a totally free download.